Hey guys, this is here bringing you another video. Welcome back to another episode of League Discussion, the series that we take topics, rip them apart, and kind of just discuss them and encourages the comment section uh, just to kind of give their opinions. And I will say, last episode, which was a couple days ago now, was actually one of the most kind of, I'd say, successful episodes that we've had of League Discussion, uh, especially around the permaban topic. I will say, it did make me a little bit bummed out that I didn't realise how many toxic people watch my videos, but I guess just that's the League of Legends community. Um, in the way that, like, you know, there wasn't, like, people being angry in the comments, but there was a lot of people, like, a few hundred people admitting that, oh, I've got a permaban account and I'd love to get it unbanned, and there was at least 200, if not more people, individual people, saying... You know, they've been permabanned. And I naively thought that I probably wouldn't have had over 10 people that watched me that's been permabanned. But I guess the problem of toxicity is bigger than I thought. Uh, but today's topics, we're gonna it's, it's probably not going to be as controversial. But there is one that will be. And we're going to begin with that one. And it's going to be all about champion reworks. Uh, so not even when a brand new champion is coming out. We're going to be talking about champion reworks. And like, when is it a good idea to take a champion, a pre-existing champion and change it and what are the positives to it what are the negatives to it are there any champions that i feel right now deserve that treatment and do I, is there any champions that i think are safe from that um thing because that is obviously the biggest concern to a lot of people who especially main a champion or one trigger champion their biggest concern is will my champion get changed and i can actually say to you guys right now and i can answer that question officially like well not officially because i don't work for riot but as a logical conclusion yeah, it's going to get changed. Like, inevitably, every single champion in League is going to eventually have a rework to some degree. Whether it be a massive rework or a little rework, it's going to happen. You're going to get buffs. You're going to get nerfs. It's going to happen. So if you are somebody that is relying purely off one champion, this is where I say be careful. Because, you know, even in the comment section, I've seen people kind of going, oh, why was a, a Galio? There's one guy. His name, even the YouTube comment section is probably, I think it is Galio. Um, it's like, oh, I used to main old Galio, and then they updated him, and my reason for League is basically gone. And people, like, you know, recently that happened to Aatrox, uh, or Akali. And it's like, you know, if you kind of put yourself into that one-box champion category, you get good with that champion, and you're bad with everything else because you have you only have played one thing for a couple of years. This is the biggest, I'd say, negative to the system. And again, it's not really a negative for me. It's not really a negative for the broad spectrum. But I'd say it is a negative to champion reworks is you are you are hurting people that, let's say, may only play that champion. So that is one point to make. Um, the positive to it, and again, this is where we can kind of discuss and you guys can say, do the positives outweigh the negatives? So, so far, if you look at the history of champion full reworks, all of them have been, or most of them have been champions with pretty low play rates. And a lot of them are a what you'd call a one-trick champion. That the only people that generally play those champions are one-tricks. And I think Riot and the premise of it is to try and open up these champions more. Or just simply to update them, which is the two main reasons. So, you know, Gangplank before his rework a couple of years ago was basically a one-trick champion that was kind of useless. Gangplank back then... He didn't have a role, you know, he wasn't a top laner, he wasn't a mid laner, he wasn't a damage dealer, he wasn't a, a tank, he had no defined playstyle. The rework gave that to him. It's like, oh, you can play him in mid and top, he's probably more of a top laner, and he's a hyper carry late game damage person with his barrels. Okay, he's got a definitive, this is what he does. Um, where before he didn't have that. So I think that is obviously a very uh, clear re positive reason why reworks happen, is to kind of just bring them to the open, the light a little bit more. And something like a Gangplank, I wouldn't even call him a one-trick champion anymore. Majority, I don't know, majority, like most top laners have probably, top lane mains have probably played Gangplank sometime in the past couple years. Because, you know, when your champion's in and out the meta and stuff, I, you're going to, you know, if you're a meta type player. And I think that's a, a, the other reason of what type of champion gets to go in these rework slots is champions that don't fit into the meta for a very long time. You know, when was the last time Akali was officially meta? I don't know, th over four years ago, probably like it or maybe never. Um, so potentially bringing her to a more updated gameplay, a 2018 update potentially does that. And the, obviously that's what Riot wants. League is a free to play game. But, you know, if they've got some characters out there that aren't, you know, people don't want to play, 
well, that's a champion slot that isn't making Riot pretty much any money because you'll have the existing player base who already play that champion. Well, they already own that champion. They already own the skins for that champion. And because it's got a low play rate, you're not going to make skin new skins for that champion because there's no point. But if you update the champion, it brings a whole new player base to playing that champion, all new people to buy skins, and then the play rate goes up. Therefore, you can make skins for that champion now and make more money. Um, so, in, in premise, do I think they're a good idea in general? Yes. Uh, every champion in the league eventually will have one done, even if you think your champion is safe. Even if you are playing the most up-to-date champion, P Pike, for example, or something like that, there will come a time that something is going to happen to Pike, uh, whether it be good or bad, but it will happen. You know, it it's inevitable it, depending how long league goes. You know, if you're somebody that plays league for the next 10 years, well, a champion that is released now could get changed in five or six years down the road, um, but it's, it still is likely to happen. But, um, yeah, no, I think they're a good thing to do. Uh, and obviously, the, the, as I said, the biggest and the only negative t that I see towards it is the community that is pre-existing for that champion. Like, I've said it before, I, I personally find it a bit funny, and I know some people don't, but whenever a champion, especially a champion rework, is announced, I advise everybody to do it. Go on the um, subreddit of that champion main community. Every single champion in the game has a subreddit um, dedicated to that champion. Some of them have multiple. But there is at least one main one. Go on there. And it's funny, man. It, it, it's very rare for these players to accept it. Because obviously that's all they know. Um, and they only can play one thing, a lot of them. But even though, let's say like Swain. Swain, in my opinion, has been an outright success. He is better than the old Swain in every avenue. He is modern. He fits like a lot of different comps. Complete and utter success. But there are still a lot of Swain ex-players who despise it. Because that's just what they knew. Um, so, like, that that's the only negative I personally can think of. Like, again, this is where you guys can come in in the comment section. If you can think of any other reasoning why they're bad, go for it. Because I personally can't. To me, the only negative is the community that pre-exists. And you're kind of, like, you're kind of screwing over the one-trick community. Uh, or the main community, at least, for those champions. But again, like I've said before, Riot doesn't build a game towards a one-trick community. And they never should. It's an unhealthy way to build a game. Regardless, but by the way, that's not a biased opinion. That's just a game design opinion. It's an unhealthy way to b design a game. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, let me know what you think. Next... Um, Next uh, thing is we're going to talk about a little bit, you know, off the topic that we spoke about last time is that, you know, why do I think they were unbanning permaban people? And the idea was like, oh, maybe to get people back into the game. Again, a lot of you made the point that it's like, yes, that is a point. But majority of people who are toxic and get permaban have like some other problems like addiction problems. So they just make new accounts like a permaban is only a permaban on one account. It's not like, you know, uh. Uh, when Tyler1 got ID banned, if they ever found out a Tyler1 account, it would be banned instantly. Like, a permaban isn't that. So the, uh, the majority of people who get permabanned just keep making new accounts. So the question here is, how can Riot actually bring back people who have quit? You know, um, the answer to this, th there's a lot of ways that they could do it. And hell, I don't know even if it will work. Um, League now is in its ninth or 10th year. I think League was officially released in 2009. Um, so we're, we're very close to it being a 10-year-old game. And again, games go through cycles. Um, you know, it's not just the game that I think has gone downhill a little bit. It's also, like, if you look at the view numbers, in ev every capacity of view numbers, whether you look at the pro scene, whether you look at YouTube view views, League of Legends has gone down in popularity in that regard. It's, by the, by the way, without, you know, because again, there's a few people every now and then it's like, oh, League's dead. League is still the video, biggest video game by over five times anything else. So in that regard, it's still flourishing. It's just well, in the West, League of Legends has definitely fallen in numbers. But in like the East, it's still stu like crazy in the East. Um, but what, what do I think? Well, this again, if any of you watching this video have quit, Give your reasoning why you quit and say what would it take for you to come back. And that is obviously going to be the best way because I, I can speculate what I think they could do. But I, I haven't quit, so I don't know. Uh, but what I think they should personally do is basically... And again, they are doing it. Listen to the community. Because right now, and I will say, you know, whether you like the idea of role ranked or dislike it, 
if you just take a step back and think what's been happening with League right now and people have been leaving the game, in my opinion, the worst thing that they could do is implement a brand new system that they that you know some people dislike it. Even if you're somebody that really likes the idea of it, to me, it would be a, even a, like even if I put myself in the shoes of going, OK, I like role ranked. I really don't think they should do it at this time because you're basically right now people have quit the game and there are definitely a, even a large amount of people that are on the fence like oh god if riot do some more things i disagree with i'm going and i think that could be like the final nail in the coffin for a lot of people if they do something like controversial i think they should just do nothing controversial for the whole the rest of this season and really the, the next season like season nine should just be a basic cis season like no risks and i know to a lot of people that's going to be boring but no risks Go back to the way it was before. Don't do patches every two to three weeks. Do longer periods of patches. Don't change the game too much even within the, the, the season. Because again, the best memories that I have of League of Legends, whether it be my own League of Legends play or competitive. And again, I don't know where people got it from that, you know, all oh, the meta has to change all the time through patches. It really doesn't. Back in season three and season four, the meta hardly changed because of patches. The meta changed because of players adapted Without the met without patch numbers changing, without any character numbers changing, people just adapted it over time and it naturally happened and that's why it felt so good. And that's why it felt so special. It wasn't forced upon you going, this is buffed, this is nerfed, you can't play that anymore, you have to play this. That wasn't a thing back in Season 3 or Season 4. It was natural. It's like, okay, the so these are the strong champions like for basically the whole season. You know, back then, Renekton, Shivana and Dr. Mundo in top lane. And it took a while for people to go, okay, we're just going to play those over time. But then it took a couple top laners, famous top laners, to discover what beat those champions. They discovered it. Then they started playing those in competitive and solo queue. And then that then launched people kind of going, oh, so they're the new champions in top lane. What beats them? And it was all natural. No patch notes changed this. It was players figuring it out for themselves. And you can't, it, there's no controversial way that you can twist that that's bad on riot or really league because it's the players figuring out how to make the changes and again you can say and I, I again i like riot but i don't think you could class the the balance team and i know they get a lot of stick but i don't class those guys as professionals like they aren't like they don't have all the knowledge of league because they can't no one has all the knowledge of league and they're trying to balance a game for for over 100 million players a month it's impossible. They're not going to get things right. And even if they get 90% of what they do right and 10% wrong, that still blows out into a massive problem like we've seen in the past couple months. So in my opinion, I just do a basic bog standard. Everything is on generally the same level and just kind of see what happens and nerf some overpowered stuff if it does become a problem. But just let the player base define the meta, not the patch notes. I think that will bring back players uh, big time. Uh, and again, just don't do anything controversial. Don't bring any new, like, changes to ranked. Um, you know, again, the vast majority of some changes that they wanted have been universally agreed on. I, I personally have not seen anybody who's been against splitting ranked into three splits within one season. I've not seen anybody against the new placement games mechanic. I've not seen anybody against having two new tiers in ranked. I've not seen anybody be against that stuff. And if you are, put it in the comments. I've not seen anybody. The only thing that I've seen people being very against, even they're even very for it or very against it, is the role ranked. And that is not the type of thing you implement when the community is already suffering. Even if you like it, I don't think it's a smart idea to implement it. If you want to implement that type of thing, have a whole year worth of, let's say, recovery, which is Season 9, and then revisit it, if at all, in Season 10. I think that's just healthier for everybody involved. Um, so yeah, please leave me your opinions down below. Um, and again, th th there's other questions going, how do I think the meta would be improved? That. Riot should not define the meta, the player base should. I think that's the biggest change that I would make. Um, Alright, so next thing, let's talk about... Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Huh... Again, there's a lot of questions like, why can't Riot balance champions' items properly? Like I said, because they've never done that before, really. Like, they set the precedent, but they never constantly... They, they, they Basically, the way that I've kind of explained it is that they're an engineer that doesn't know when to stop. 
they're constantly tinkering with stuff instead of just letting it play out and see what happens. Let the player base give them more time to figure our stuff out. Because when you're constantly tinkering with stuff, like the balance team, constantly every couple weeks changing something, that's where you can get, you know, one patch could lead to one overpowered thing getting through. A patch happens three weeks later, and the first thing hasn't got fixed, another overpowered thing gets through. Within a couple months, it's just a mess. Just don't change a lot and just let the player base do it. Uh, final thing, let's actually talk about Tilt. Um, so a lot of people always want to know about Tilt. You know, does Tilt exist? Which, by the way, yes, it does. It even exists in sport. You can, f what I'd say in sport, you actually can physically see Tilt a lot more. Um, so Tilt, yes, it's a thing. Um, and like my just general advice around it. So tilt occurs, in my opinion, when someone cares about what they're doing and it's basically not working out the way that's planned. Whether they're just play like, again, you can tilt, by the way, in a winning game. It's unlikely, but you can because you expect yourself to play a certain way. And if you don't kind of get up to that level, um, that's when you'll probably tilt. Um, but, but the vast majority of the time you tilt is when it's a terrible game and you just kind of feel like you can't do anything about it. That's most of the time when people tilt. Um, my advice behind it, and again, as speaking as somebody that, you know, I tilt, but I tilt in a way that I guess is different to most. Most people tilt and they turn to being toxic. Um, I tilt and I go negative, but never toxic. Like, I, whenever I, like, again, the majority, when, when you can spot a tilted person, they'll type a lot. They'll, that's when they'll go for the insults. And they could be, you know, again, it's the classic, they're 0 and 5, and they're the one calling people bad. That is the just stereotypical tilted player. Um, I tilt, basically, that I make a lot more mistakes than normal, just basic. And I just go negative thinking this game's a loss, Jesus, like, blah, 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 blah. That's how I tilt. Um, the way that to get off tilt, I've said it for the past few years, is don't play another game of League if you know you're tilted. And again, sometimes you don't realize it's too late and you're playing five games. You lose five games in a row and go, oh, God, I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, I go on a different game and all I do to get off tilt is all tilting is to me is a mindset of losing. It's a loser's mentality. So all you've got to do, in my opinion, is jump onto a different game or even you stay on League if you want to, but go into an ARAM, go into a Nexus Blitz when it's out, go into a normal game. And all you have to do and all that I have to do is win. That's it. Go into even a different game. I could jump onto, I don't know, Heroes of the Storm, Overwatch, whatever. It doesn't matter. If I just win at one of those games, instantly my tilt is gone. Because it goes from a losing mentality to then seeing the victory screen. And I've said it before. You can be tilted in a game of League. You turn a game. You see that victory screen. You're not tilted anymore. It's that's, it's, it's all about mentality and power of like mind, I guess. Um, and my advice that if you are in a game of League and you identify yourself as tilted. It's my classic saying. In that game, don't, be, don't try to be Batman. Try to be Robin. No matter what role you are, you could be either carry ADK, AD carry, but don't try to be like, I'm the Batman, the superhero of this game. I'm going to do everything. My team has to back me up. If you know you're tilted, try to take a back, back step and just kind of like have an overview of the game and read the game more. Read what's going on and then move forward. Uh, and I think you'll have a more likely chance of success. But yeah, I don't think. You know, tilt is nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody tilts, you know. that You may call it different things in life. Um, you know, in, the, in like the real world, having a bad day in your office. Have you ever gone to your office job and just everything's not working your way? Well, that's tilt. It's just you don't call it that in an office setting, obviously. So it, it's just the way of it. It's a human thing. And again, some people that they'll, like again, I think most people tilt. But there will be some people you can watch in this video go, oh, I never tilt. Those are the people that I say that I let's say a little bit more casual. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But they even, they even can be ranked players, but they just don't really care about their rank. So losing doesn't really bother them. It's when losing bothers you because you care about your rank is when you'll most likely tilt. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. So a good amount of discussion that you guys can do in the comment section. Please throw a like on the video. It does help out. Leave those comments. Leave those replies. I'll also be replying like I did in the last commentary um, or discussion. So yeah, that's going to be it. Like, subscribe. See you guys next time. See ya.